What is white balance? White balance basically, if we break it down to its most simple terms, is the color temperature of the lights that fall on your subject. Every light has its own temperature and it can vary through a wide range. The sun has a certain temperature, strobes have a certain temperature, the tungsten lights that you use in your lamps at home have their own temperature. The problem with those color temperatures in your photography is that they influence the color. Why is it important? Because if they mix together in the incorrect fashion or your camera doesn't know how to read them, they're going to change the color of your photo. Little Johnny from the baseball game might have green skin. We don't want that. We want consistent, good color. Now, let's take it a step further. Every place that you shoot has its own individual color characteristics. It's almost impossible to shoot under one color temperature. It never happens. Even outside, if you're just shooting with sunlight, the color temperature can vary depending on time of day, barometric pressure, cloud cover, where you are in relationship to the equator. So many things can affect it that we need to, as a photographer, take control of that and make it consistent. Your camera actually has a lot of functions in it that are made to help you with that white balance. The problem is they're not always consistent. If you use auto white balance, the color temperature from frame to frame can actually be different. There's a lot of presets. You have strobe, you have daylight, you have shade. The problem with those is that they presuppose that each of those light sources is always going to be a certain temperature and it's not. As a fluorescent tube ages, the gas actually will change the color of the light temperature. Tungsten, same thing. Now, before we talk about how to actually fix the white balance issue, we need to talk about how you're shooting. If you're shooting in JPEG, you have to realize that you're taking an awful lot of information and you're cramming it into a little compressed file. When you do that, if you try to make a change later on, you can actually lose a large part of your file. If you want to prove that to yourself, open up a JPG that you shot. Look at the histogram. It'll be a nice smooth wave in there. If you make a change, save it, and then look at that histogram again, you're going to see it looks like a saw blade. You just lost a third of the data in that file, and that's a problem. Because of that, I recommend using RAW. If you shoot in RAW, you're actually making a digital negative. And those settings that are outside of the, the file itself are saved separately. So later on, you can go in and you can change those things without affecting the data itself. The problem here is we could make the argument well, I can fix color temperature in RAW later on. You can, but do you really want to? If you're a professional and you're making your living by shooting photographs and every photograph is inconsistent or the color temperature is inconsistent, that means you have to fix every single file individually later. That's not a good thing. That's money loss. If you're just a, a weekend shooter and you, you go out and take pictures of little Johnny's baseball game or a birthday party that you're at and you have 50 files that you want to print out, that's a problem too because you're going to spend most of the next day trying to fix the individual files for each color temperature. So now let's talk about how to deal with white balance. What I use is the Expo Disc by Expo Imaging. This is a great little tool and it helps. There are a lot of different options out there on the market. You have targets, you have pop-outs, you have gray cards, you have white cards. Heck, I have the original gray card I've had since I was 11 years old. And I'm still not sure what the color temperature of coffee stain is. It's been around the block. So, what I've done lately to get rid of the inconsistencies that come from using those targets, such as if I have one color temperature coming in from this side, one color temperature coming in from this side, I got to average those and if I use a gray card or a target, I put it in front of my subject and I got to make sure that I'm angled just right in order to get an equal mix of those color temperatures. With the Expo Disc, I don't have to do that. The Expo Disc actually has a prism built into the front of it which averages all of the colors in the visible light spectrum that are falling on your subject into one single gray frame. You can't mess this up. You put it over the front of your lens so no light leaks in. You don't have to have it in front of your subject anymore. There's no variables. And it averages those colors so that your camera can now understand this is true white. And when it does, all of the rest of the colors fall into line. Little Johnny's face won't be green in your next print. 
Now there are several benefits to using the Expo Disc. One, each unit is individually calibrated and tested for complete neutrality, so you're not adding colors with the very tool that you're using. Two, is that the rear element actually only lets 18% of the light through, so you can get an averaged exposure like an incident meter at the very same time that you get your custom white balance. The Expo Disc comes in two flavors. The one we've been looking at so far is the Expo Disc Neutral. This gives you what you see is what you get. The colors that you're looking at when you shoot the photo are the colors that you will get in the end result photo. The other version is the Expo Disc Portrait. What this does is basically the same thing as the neutral, but the colors in the skin tones, the yellows, the reds, get just a little bit of a boost to give it that nice soft glow. So my rule of thumb is with female portraits, female models, family portraits, wedding portraits, I tend to use the portrait version and then neutral for everything else. It's a great effect.